Pageant Queen, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear this title? Vanity, naivety, airhead, or my personal favorite, world peace? <laughs> the first instance we saw of the breaking of these common misconceptions was the introduction of the hit noughties chick flick, Miss Congeniality. I'm not sure if you've seen it. <laughs> but the title character challenges her own misconceptions about the industry as she goes undercover to intercept security threat at the Miss United States competition. As I just said, I am a former Miss England, Miss United Kingdom, and Miss World Europe. And I was lucky enough to play second runner up at the Miss World competition in 2017 in Sanya, China. To the horror of many in my industry, I had deliberately not seen Miss Congeniality for fear that I was going to be exposed. It has to be said, I do like a sing-along on a long bus journey, but also I'm not the biggest fan of chick flicks and the stereotypes they often perpetuate. I fell into pageantry by complete accident. A friend of mine at my local amateur dramatic society had been scouted for the Miss England competition. And in my naivety, I thought we could do it together. Uh, surely there's not much more to it than a catwalk and some dance elements as well. But I soon found out that that wasn't the case. Four long years and four attempts later, I was finally successful in winning the Miss England title and the opportunity to represent my country at Miss World. Pageantry, like many hobbies, is very elusive when it comes to the failures experienced in comparison to the often well-celebrated, well-televised and publicized, but very rare success. Pageantry taught me at a very young age to accept failure and rejection with grace and dignity and then be sensible about my goals moving forwards. What on earth has this got to do with polymathy? I can hear you think. I was introduced to polymathy when I was invited to sit on the panel for the 500th anniversary of Leonardo da Vinci at the British Library in 2018. Like many before me, and many probably in the audience, I didn't know that I was a polymath or what a polymath even was. Polymaths, for those that don't know, are people who are cited as being very successful in a number of unrelated fields and has actually been the topic of many TED Talks prior to this one. Polymaths are cited as something that is dying out or even died with Leonardo da Vinci himself, whereas others argue that we are in the middle of a new accessible Renaissance era. And that's the team that I'm on. My personal polymathic pursuits are as follows. By profession, I'm a scientist and a therapeutic radiographer, and I'm currently undertaking my PhD at the University of Manchester in association with Cancer Research UK, looking at new treatments using radiotherapy for cervical and bladder cancers. I'm also a trained dancer in ballroom, Latin, ballet, tap, modern jazz, and theatre craft, and I'm also a passionate equestrian. I'm also a classical crossover vocalist, and this is a side hustle throughout university but it started off as me basically being a princess performer in the height of frozen fever. You've got to do what you've got to do, right? <laughs> I am a flautist, an artist, and I love to complete my real life Disney princess persona with a little dressmaking also. <laughs> I should note that I am as well-rounded in the things that I absolutely cannot do and have tried many, many times. I am a terrible driver. I have been driving or trying to for nine years. My only remaining coaches in my local area have now ghosted me. So it looks like I'm going to be using public transport for the foreseeable future, but that's probably better for the safety of everyone else. I'm also terrible at winter sports. I cannot ice skate, snowboard or ski, which doesn't make any sense to say that I've been doing balance related activities for the majority of my life. So on paper, it's quite random if hopefully impressive, and I've often referred to myself as a walking CV with a heartbeat. But to me, it's simply the result of boredom, impatience, and insatiable curiosity, which is a common personality trait amongst many polymaths. I'm hoping now there are a couple of people in the audience who, if they didn't know already, are sat there thinking, a polymath, is that what I am? Is that what this is? Pageants as we know them now are a far cry from the light-hearted, slightly shallow, televised competitions from the 60s and 70s. 
Miss World and Miss Universe and similar systems require candidates to be multifaceted at baseline and then to compete in a number of different rounds. A talent round, a sports round, a live panel discussion, in addition to having a humanitarian project and a level of academic prowess. This baseline expectation of candidates to be multifaceted leans to a very polymathic approach to the development of women. And it's the only industry, in my experience, that develops women in this way. I realized the importance of having a multifaceted panel of candidates when we toured India, Indonesia, the British Virgin Islands and China working on a feminine hygiene awareness campaign as part of the Beauty with a Purpose tour. My personal contribution to this campaign was advising governments and ministers about the impact of poor feminine hygiene, particularly in India, and its impact on global cancer statistics, particularly in gynecological cancers, of which India at the time was contributing to over 27% of the world's gynecological cancers. And we did believe that this was related to poor feminine hygiene and its awareness. Pageantry gave purpose to my polymathy, but also gave me a platform to practice safely with no limitations and no boundaries. The purpose of this talk wasn't to stand here and prove to you all that the misconceptions associated with pageantry are as outdated as the days of old competitions that they used to be associated with, nor am I a recruiter for the pageant industry. And you don't have to compete in a pageant to take part in our wonderful new Renaissance era. I just wanted to share my unconventional route into polymathy, as well as forward the notion that a wonderful motivation for pursuing a multifaceted life ultimately leans to a greater purpose, to educate, to share, to inspire, and ultimately, to learn. <laughs>